What up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna dive right into it today. I made a video a while back teaching people how to use Envato Elements templates in Adobe After Effects. I wasn't nearly as skilled as I was now. I didn't understand how to make tutorials. I'm gonna make this one a lot better, but I'm also not gonna trim out a bunch of my errors, my mess ups when I run into an issue. You guys are gonna see me work through it start to finish. I'll try to cut out as much wasted footage as I can, but I really want you guys to understand from a very beginner aspect of everything you need to know about how Envato Elements templates work, how to use Adobe After Effects from a beginner aspect. Sometimes you find templates that just suck and it is what it is. So, so the first tip I wanna give you is if you get into a template and it starts giving you a bunch of trouble, scrap it, move on to the next one. If it's too difficult to figure out, move on because they really shouldn't be. They should be fairly simple. Let's dive right into it. So we hit the download link. Download link comes in, we get a zip file. Double click the zip file, open up the file. Sometimes you'll see CS5, CS6, CS, or CC. If you have the option to choose CC, choose CC. It's going to convert it to the newest version of Premiere Pro that you're using anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I like to work in the newest version of After Effects. It's always the best. So unless you have an old version of After Effects, you should be good to just open it in any version you want. I'm gonna be editing in the 2021 Adobe After Effects beta. If you get any warnings, just hit, just hit okay. They normally don't mean anything. Okay, the first thing you're gonna wanna realize in Adobe After Effects, how things work and how these templates are built, they normally structure them very well. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see several tabs. You'll see your edit tab. If I drop this down, normally in here, you'll see media, placeholders. This is the area that they pretty much are telling you exactly where you need to put your footage at. Over here, you'll see final and a final comp. So if I look down here, I'll see final comp and you see final comp up here. So if I close this tab down here and then double click this one again, final comp is gonna open. When we go through here and I click on each one of these tabs, like this will be media one. So when I double click media one, it's gonna open up over here. Media one is your placeholder for your media. So we're just gonna literally drag our files and drop them into here and then you'll see them in the background here. So as you're adding things to these different files or different layers they call them at the very end they take all of the content and they put it together inside your final comp and that's what actually makes your end video down here you'll see music i don't necessarily think that you actually need to put your music where they tell you to put the music unless there's an actual like some flashing things going on or somehow the video is reacting to the music it's not necessarily a, a mandatory thing that you put your music there if you once you're in your final comp you can literally just drag your music and drop it into here make sure you drop it and then drag it all the way up to the top if it's not at the top because if there's any other sounds below that it'll play those first and over your sounds over here is your text so if the video has text in it, this is where we'll be editing our text. They make this really easy for you. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I'm just going to grab 20 random photos or 10 random photos, however I, many I need for this. I'm not gonna be making this super specific or designed for any reason besides the training purposes to help you guys out. Don't mind if my media is all messed up and mixed match and whatever. So over here at the top left, before we start bringing in our media, I wanna point this out. You can see this frame size. So it's 13 by 1300. So if you guys know Instagram, 1080 by 1080, so just a little bit bigger than that. If I double click on it, it opens up the placeholder and you can see there's 1080 by 1080, 540 by 540. I don't know why it was saying 1300 by 1300 before. Eh, looks like it's 1080 by 1080. So we can grab any square photo, you can grab a landscape, vertical, it doesn't matter. Okay, you can see over here, these are all of my photos. And now you'll see that it, it placed the size of my media into After Effects the same size that it was over here. So if I look at my file size, I can see that this is a 4K photo. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is resize and position those in the proper position. You do so by hitting S on your keyboard for size, and I can size it down. And then if I wanna move it over, I hit P for position, and I can just drag it into place. I'm gonna hit S for scale, scale that down a little bit. And if you see black over here, you know your photo's not in the proper position. If I toggle this, this is my transparency grid. So if I move her over and I toggle that on and off, now I can see the background. Depending on what type of content you're working with, sometimes you like to have it on, sometimes you like to have it off. It's nice just to know. So that looks good there. Now we're just gonna go right through here and do the same thing. So I'm not gonna talk, I'm just you're just gonna see me do the same thing. If I wanted to rotate that, I could also hit R on my keyboard for rotation. 
So maybe I wanted to kind of mess around with these, which is nice when they're bigger than the actual frame size, because then you have the ability to kind of move, maneuver, and position those. At any time, if I want to go back, I just hit Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, and I'm right back to where I started. You can zoom in up to, wow, like 6,400%. So if I wanted to zoom in to check out pixels and see if anything was messed up or there was any issues with the image, I could do so. And then I just go back here. If I hold down Option on my keyboard and scroll my mouse forward and backwards, I can also zoom in. If I hold down Command and do the same thing, it'll zoom in and out. I always just like to go with Fit. And then every once in a while, since it's so close to the edge of the frame here, I might go back down to like 100 just to make sure that I'm still in frame. Every time you open a different panel, depending on what that whoever designed the template, what size they had it set at, it'll change to that size. So this one I have at 128. When I open up this one, click over in here, you'll see it's back at 100. So the next one might be 25%. It gets kind of annoying. So sometimes at the beginning, if it's a large template, I'll go through and open up each one set all my sizes properly, and then just close them back out and reopen them as I need them. See, here's one at 50%. Honestly, I don't really like this photo, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop another one in there. You can stack two photos on top of each other. Whatever one's on top is gonna take uh, priority. So a lot of times if I add a second photo, I decide I want to change something up. I just go ahead and uh, turn this one off. That way I'll never see it, it won't be an issue. And if I need it, it's right there. I can just turn it back on. You can also drag the image around. Sometimes when you're messing with other templates, it's kind of annoying to do it that way because they have other things there. So depending on what layer you're working on, I just get a habit of using the keyboard and down here and it just it's just been really good for me. So when you open a template or you open a layer and you don't see anything, you just have to click here in the timeline and it'll automatically show for the first time. So I'll save, I'll save that very end one for the end. Make my last photo like far out. Hit them with the close up there. I can also hit Command C on my keyboard, go over to number 10, hit Command V, and now I got that copied and pasted in there. So they're telling us to add our music here, so let's go ahead and come in over to our music file. Perfect. Drag and drop our song in here. When you press play over here, and you can hear that it took a second to start playing, I can find the spot I want to start at. Wherever my timeline is, I'm going to hold Shift Command D and it'll cut that clip. Whether it's music, video, photo, it's super easy to Shift Command D on a Mac. I assume that it's Shift Windows D on Windows. I would, I would just double check Google that. Slide it over. Okay, so it's starting where I wanted it. I also did not have to cut that clip. I could just click over here and drag to the left and whatever is over past this point is just gonna get cut off. I can hit Command Z to move that back. So now maybe I wanna add a fade in. So there's no way to do that manually. I could come down here, audio, so zero decibels is where it's playing at right now. So if I come over to say like the, like three quarters of a second mark and I put a keyframe here, that starts the keyframe at perfect audio because that's zero decibels, exactly how we were hearing it. If I come back over here and drag this down to negative 40 or anything below negative 40, you won't hear. So let's just go up to like negative 30. And then we can move it over if we want it to, to lock, get louder faster. We just slide it over. I 
I like it. I don't like it actually. So we're just gonna delete those. Just hit Command Z, Command Z. Let's go all the way back. See if we can't find. So where I cut it off, I can also just click there and drag over to get more of it back on there. It just kind of jumps right into it. So I don't think we're gonna be able to beat around that, so. Right there, that's where I wanted it. So it stopped it right there. We wanna bring that all the way over to the beginning, right there. I shut my eyes, trying not to speak. Pretend that I'm dreaming. I... Okay, we can work with that. Nothing crazy, nothing special. So now what I wanna do is I wanna close out all these layers since I'm not working on them anymore. I don't need them open, they'll just get in the way. We're just gonna close all those out. And we have our final comp. So now we can start to see what things are looking like. So let's go ahead and watch it through. I shut my eyes trying not So it's at half render, I could put it at quarter, which I normally do. This is how you set the speed. So if I set it at full, it's gonna show you a preview in 4K. Everything is rendered out perfectly. Every little detail will be on point. But if you're just trying to figure out where you wanna put your text, <clears throat> whether you need to reposition a photo, anything like that, it's just so simple to do just watch it play in quarter. So I'm gonna let this play. I'll cut this part out. I shut my eyes, trying you gotta not wait to for it to render through. All right, sorry guys. Now that we got it all uh, rendered out, let's take a look at it. I shut my eyes, trying not to speak. Pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, not listening, but I still hear you screaming. So I can already see where I messed up there in the beginning. You could tell with this template that the photo should have been more, there should have been a bigger change. Like I shouldn't have put those two back to back because they're both black. So I should have been trying to change the photos. So a simple way to do that is just to kind of go back through here, go to media two. We noticed this one in the video, we didn't scale that properly, so that one's gotta go anyways. And you can see that this one is vertical, so it doesn't matter whether they're portrait vertical sometimes, you just gotta work with what the template gives. I guess since it's the photographer um, intro, I should probably showcase a little bit more of my work than just a few different shoots in New York. Okay, now that I got all the shots I want in there, I already know it's gonna play good. Probably don't even really need to watch it, but I can just scrub through it here. And it already is looking so much better with the change in, in tempo there. So now what I'm looking for is the text. So it says Video Hive Presents. So that's gonna be your text one. They normally always go in order. So if I watch the template, I see Video Hive and I open up text box one, I'm looking for Video Hive. So I could say. So you can see the, the text. So if I go from two texts to one, I wanna make sure I recenter that. You can come over here and you can make sure you're centered here with your paragraphs. These are all your text and how you can actually change fonts. So if I didn't like that font, I could come over here, choose a different font, move that into position. So if I hit P on my keyboard and I'm still in text, it'll not text. I'm gonna hit, oops. I'm gonna hit, make sure I'm clicked down here, hit P, and then I can reposition things.
And then say I just don't I just don't want to use any of their text. I don't want to I want to get rid of the rest of them. Videography, photography, maybe leave a couple with like no text just to keep it clean. Now, nah, let's just keep it clean. Where was I at? Number 7. Just turn off number 7. Seven's off. Eight's off. Just turn off the eyedropper. That way, in case you want to reuse this template, you can go back and reuse it. And this is where you want to put your logo. So, I'm going to come up. So you can see there, I had the option to use text or just drop my logo in there. At any time, I could add text to any one of these shots if I wanted to. So now if we go back over here, let's close out all of the media tabs we're not using. Okay, so we have our final comp here. Now you can notice that there's some things that are going on here, like there's a faded film look over this. If I double click on main, you'll see that it's locked. So they don't want you to alter this template. If I unlock that, I can then double click on here. Now I can scroll through here and see everything that they have going on. You can see the one is not checked here. So if I check that, maybe it, would, it did, it did something different. So you can see that there's different effects that they have turned on and turned off for these for specific templates. Right here is what's called the shy guy. So if I turn on the shy guy, and I come down here and I toggle this, I toggle this. You can actually see any, like if this layer wasn't on and they wanted to hide this, they would click turn on the Shy Guy logo. And now when I click this, any one of these I wanna hide and get rid of, I can do so by using this logo. So if you ever open up a template and you can't find something, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like, you're getting better at After Effects, you're trying to find things, but you can't find them. This is very important to understand that they can hide things on you. So a lot of times these people, these creators of these templates will make these and they'll just modify a few things and then they'll have like five different versions of this on Envato Elements. Realize that they don't always go through and delete what you're not using. That's how you find it. So anytime you're looking to see what's going on, for example, at this exact point, none of these effects are happening because they're not actually in the timeline. So if I'm like, man, I don't like how that does that faded film look. You can go over here and just click eyedroppers and turn things off to see what effects actually being applied. So you can see that one right there is tinting the sides. That one's doing something to the second, the center. I wish I could find out what that heck that, uh, that hazy look is. Not to speak, pretend that I'm <laughs> pretend that I'm dreaming. So yeah, guys, that's about it. That should give you guys a full understanding of exactly how these templates work, how they operate over here just special effects and things like that that you can kind of dig into i was going to try to figure out how to turn off that faded film but uh doesn't seem like i'm gonna find have much luck on there i could spend the next hour and a half two hours looking for that faded film effect on here and have no idea where it's at and never find it so i don't want to like bore you guys or lag this out sometimes like i said if that was an effect that was a game changer for me and i couldn't get rid of it I would have noticed that right in the beginning. I know it was right when I loaded that first photo, I noticed that it was happening and I could have at that point decided, hey, screw this template. Like this isn't for me. I don't, I don't know how to change that. It's too advanced. Just jump onto the next one. A lot of times some of these templates are so easy. You just got to plug your photos in or plug your videos in. All right, guys, one last thing too. We're going to need to export this. So now that we're back over here in our final comp, we watched our video. We like how everything looks. Everything looks good. We're going to come over here. We're going to go up to export and we're gonna add it to Adobe Media Encoder. If you do it in Render Quints, you're not gonna be able to play it if it's on a Mac because Mac no longer works with QuickTime. QuickTime has gives you the QuickTime playback error, so definitely don't export it that way. I have another video which explains this in great detail. We're just gonna to add to Adobe Media Encoder. So I don't know why Adobe Media Encoder is not working. <clears throat> I have another video which is linked down below. I'll show you guys how to export this. If you're just looking to upload it right to YouTube and you don't need to use it on a Mac, you can add it to render queens. 
So back over here now that we're on our final comp, we're just gonna go up here, file, export, add to render queens. We got the one in here we want. Just this is the only one. I sorry I did it twice, so that's why you seen two. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna choose lossless. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna do RGB alpha, and we're gonna do format options. We're gonna go to animation and we're gonna go Apple Pro Res 444. We're gonna hit OK. And we're gonna hit OK. This might allow it to play on your Mac. I'm not sure. It allows my lower thirds and other things I do this way, but they also have transparent backgrounds and they're not full screen. So this might be one way to get that issue to work and allow it to play on your Mac. If not, you're gonna to need to use Adobe Media Encoder. You're gonna to wanna to choose where it'll say, it'll say render settings, I believe, or source module. Output module, you want H.264. And then the preset, I always do YouTube 4K Ultra HD or YouTube 1080p, depending on the size of the template. Since this template look, seems to be 2K, like 1920 by 1080, I would assume that that's the same there, so I would do it that way. If it was a 4K template, I would use the 4K option. Videos for that will be linked below. And then just click render to start, obviously. You just hit render. Once you got your settings good, should render out and you should be good to go. I also will give you some advice too. Working with videos versus photos, you really need to have that specific type of shot for that template. Sometimes you can make things work and other times you can't. Also, at any time if it's calling for a video or a photo, or if it's calling for a video, you can easily put a photo in there. You don't have to use a video. Just because it says video placeholder does not mean that it's an actual specifically designed for videos. At any point, if I wanted to put a video in here where it says media, I could drag a video in there and a video would be playing. It's literally, you get a certain amount of time for each, each menu or each piece of content. So if you go back over here to our final, or we go into main now, you can see right down here, these have like the text window. This text only displays during this period. So if I come over here and I actually had text four, you'd actually see text four in there but we turned off a bunch of them. But videography is still on. What text is that? Okay, so videography is text four. That's why you can see it there. And then obviously, if we go a little bit sooner in the timeline and you can't see it here, it's because the other layers are still taking priority, meaning they're stacked on top of that. And this, this program is really so advanced that I could go on and on all day about explaining like what things do, how things work. For example, photography should be text three. If we come over here to text three and I wanted to change the color of that, come over here and click pink or purple or whatever color we wanted. Sometimes they will have, if I come down here and I look over here and you see, if you see that there's a drop down next to something like text, maybe there is source text here and this thing had a drop down next to it here and I try changing the color and I can't, change the color, come over here and click this little guy. This little parent whip, a lot of times they'll attach a color change to all of the text. So if I come over here and I can't and I change it and it's automatically getting changed back to a different color, try checking this, try just clicking on this and go back through and watch. Every time you make a change to something that you don't know what you're doing, just go back and replay the template, replay the video, just make sure what you're changing actually is what you wanted to change and you didn't mess anything else up. As soon as I start diving into things and changing things that I don't know what they control, I, I'll change like two or three and then if they didn't fix what I needed to, I'll instantly command Z, command Z, put them back in place where they were. That way I don't get too far down the road and go, oh my gosh, I've been two hours. I've had a video that took 24 hours to render out. It was so complex. And when I press play to watch it, you guys seen how long it takes. So even watching that was like a couple hours for it just to render at a quarter speed. Well, I had misplaced a text and it was to it totally destroys the whole template but it didn't when it's rendering you can't watch it so literally 24 hours later I waited for this one video and it was a complete waste second time after I fixed modified some things it took 36 hours to render out so imagine being that far into a video and realizing that you had messed something up in the beginning that would suck so hopefully this video helps you guys out if you guys want to learn more if I missed anything if I didn't explain something well enough Definitely come back and let me know. Up here is also your toolbar. 
You can get like eraser tools, the roto brush tool, the pen tools. You can draw boxes. All of those things are kind of more advanced. I just wanted to show you guys what you actually needed to work with an Envato Elements template. If there's any specific templates that you guys are struggling with that you guys want to see me make a training video on, kind of especially if it's just right to the point like, hey, how do I do this in this template? Feel free to drop a comment below. I love making these things and I love making content that helps you guys and adds value to your lives. I don't think that there's been any one program that's really saved me more money than after effects and then also using Envato elements templates because that couple hundred bucks that i pay to get this level of content without having to do all the work of manually making that template to manually make that template just like that guy did with all those transitions and effects a good 10 12 hour maybe 24 hour type of job so it's it's definitely a lot that goes into these so being able to just to plug and play way to go so hopefully I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you so much. Hopefully, if this video helps you guys, will hit the subscribe button. Help me out. Thank you so much.